Take a look at the four polynomials on the board and answer the following question. Can one of these polynomials be expressed as a linear combination of the rest? In other words, are these polynomials linearly dependent? Now, just a short while ago, you would have answered, I have no idea. But now that you're well on your way to mastering linear algebra, you can easily answer this question. And the answer is yes, these polynomials are linearly dependent. So yes, one of them is a linear combination of the rest. Now I'm not saying that the actual coefficients are easy to find. That would require more work. But you can easily assert that such decomposition exists without indicating what the coefficients are or even how to find them. Now here's the simple reasoning made possible by the powerful ideas we developed in the earlier videos. What we have here is four quadratic polynomials. So they all belong to the space of polynomials of degree up to two. You can say more loosely that they all belong to the vector space of quadratic polynomials. And there are four of them, and that space is three-dimensional. Now, how do I know that the space of quadratic polynomials is three-dimensional? Well, that's because I can come up with a basis for it. Here's the basis. We always put sets of vectors in curly brackets. And the three elements in the basis are x squared, x, and 1. These are three quadratic polynomials, and this set can serve as a basis for the entire space. Now, how do I know this is a basis? Well, I have to show two things. Number one, that these polynomials are linearly independent. And I think it's clear that they are, because x squared cannot be a linear combination of x and 1, because where, where is x squared going to come from? And so forth, x cannot be a linear combination of the other two, and neither can 1. So yes, this set is linearly independent, but it's also a spanning set. That's the second thing you have to assert about your set of vectors. And yes, this is a spanning set, because any other quadratic polynomial can be easily decomposed as a linear combination of these three. For example, taking this one, it would be 1 of this element minus 72 of this element plus 9 of this element. Let's do this one just as easy. e of this element, whatever e is, square root of 19 of this element minus 4 of this element. And it's clear that any other quadratic polynomial can be expressed as a linear combination of these vectors. So yes, this is a basis. And there are three elements in this basis. So this space is three-dimensional. And what we have is four vectors in a three-dimensional space. And when you have more vectors than dimensions, as we've learned, they're necessarily linearly dependent. So by the principles we've developed earlier, this set of polynomials is linearly dependent, and one of them can be expressed as a linear combination of the rest. Now this was only one example of linear algebra providing an incredible insight to a complicated problem. After all, with the help of linear algebra, all we had to do to solve this complicated problem was count to four. We'll witness this kind of power over and over again. And in the next video, we'll apply the same ideas to discover a fundamental truth about linear systems.